morning. Another chit chat. Let's do it. I do have to be quick, y'all. I do gotta be quick because I actually have to review some documents for this CRO. This is like a clinical research organization. They manage a lot of like site documents and they asked me to take a little look-see. So I'm gonna set up so we can, you know, get into the coffee chat. Hold on. <laughs> First, of course, I wanna show you guys my outfit. I'm wearing these JW Marriott like slippers just around the house because the floors were just cleaned so no outside shoes anymore these are from zara they're super comfortable and then this is from witchery i got it in south africa a goyard tote my tom ford prescription glasses and then just like my regular jewelry pretty cozy today but i thought i'd just show you that before we get started okay today we're going to be talking about the different sectors in biotech and pharma i made a video of this on tiktok i was basically explaining all the careers that exist that people don't know about in healthcare you guys know i work in regulatory affairs i'm a director currently i've held positions interimly as high as VP of Regulatory Affairs. That was for a period of time for my client before they decided to bring on a full-time Vice President of Regulatory Affairs. Anyway, let me pull up document. So you guys are gonna be seeing the screenshot that I took on my phone. I'm gonna put it on the screen so you know what I'm looking at. But there are four main sectors in biotechnology. There's services, commercial operations, operations, and then research and development. Regulatory affairs is in the research and development sector. Why are we in research and development? Because we're an integral part of getting the study started. We're an integral part of getting the study approved so that the clinical operations team can actually start dosing patients. We're also involved in the preclinical stages because we're the people who submit those preclinical reports to the FDA or whatever health authority that we're working with. It could be anywhere, but essentially we're in the research and development area. I recommend people who have graduated with a bachelor's in any sort of science degree, biochemistry, chemistry, biology, even maybe kinesiology, you know, any general science. Look into research and development if you're not interested in becoming a clinical doctor. There's opportunities for you at the associate level. I am gonna say a disclaimer, and I've been saying this a lot on TikTok and on Instagram. It's a lot harder to get into research and development entry level a lot of people are going to need to do like externships or some sort of volunteer opportunity during your undergraduate years because we have PharmDs who are well versed in the research and development aspects. I mean, they understand the drugs and medicines and how it works in the human body better than anybody else for the most part. That's like what they study pharmacology. So they are starting to leave retail and come into research and development at an exponential exponential rate. So you're gonna have to have some sort of experience. Even me starting in regulatory, and I've said this before, I feel like you can't really see my eyes. I feel like I've said this before, I worked in a pharmacy. I was a pharmacy technician for three years all throughout college before I got a regulatory role. I also was doing public health work at Yale University before I started working in regulatory. All my colleagues, they either came from the lab, even the, like a regulatory manager that I work with was telling me how they started in the lab for like four or five years before they got an opportunity in regulatory. So. That's just for regulatory in general, and if you're under eye, just think about that. You're gonna wanna get some sort of like intersection with healthcare, pharma, research, anything before you look for full-time opportunities. So anyway, in research and development, we have preclinical research. Preclinical research is essentially anything that's not in humans. A lot of those are like in the mice models. You have to make sure that it's moderately safe before you dose it in humans. I mean, that's just, kind of how it works. And a lot of times when you do go in humans, you'll start at a lower dose range to not cause any like negative impacts. But you wouldn't know that unless you got uh, data from the animal models. People who have worked in labs before, I think like preclinical lab work is a really good place to start. Like I said, a lot of people worked in the lab. There's not as many like preclinical associate level roles as in the people who like are writing the study reports and stuff like that. Cause that's a pretty senior person, normally like a PhD responsible for that. Then we have project management. I feel like there's a ton of entry level project management roles and there's project management in like different sectors. So like regulatory, we have project management, but then we have project management for the whole research and development pipeline. We have project management for different studies. So I think 
if you are just graduating and you're trying to find like where to go, you can look at project management, start there and get some experience working with other cross-functional teams and then transition over. Clinical development, clinical operations, those are the people who are responsible for running the clinical studies. Medical affairs, that's more when you get to like phase two, phase three. Medical affairs, again, not many entry level roles unless you're like a PharmD or you have your masters. Discovery research, we also have pharmaceutical product development. And every company is gonna do things a little bit differently. These are just generalized groups. So if I were you, if I were in someone's position right now looking for an opportunity, I would literally type preclinical research on LinkedIn and see what jobs come up. And I would filter by like experience level. I would look at project management, discovery research, all those, and then filter. Next is operations. That's gonna be manufacturing. Some people put manufacturing in research and development because you don't have a study if you don't have IP. IP stands for investigational product. So if you don't have no product, you don't have no study. So, and that's part of the documentation that we actually submit to the health authorities as well. They wanna know your stability testing. They wanna know container closure, stuff like that. And um, sometimes you have to conduct additional studies to like take one formulation to the next because sometimes people start with a different formulation in preclinical phase one and then they change the formulation when they go into their larger trials like phase three. Like right, not like in phase three they change it, but like before that. But manufacturing is one. I think if you have a chemistry degree starting in CMC, chemistry, manufacturing and controls is a great place to start. There are entry level roles there. When I worked, when I left Connecticut and came to LA, the first regulatory job I got coming back was actually CMC. I wasn't specialized in CMC, um, but I definitely faked it till I made it. I don't like CMC because it's repetitive and boring, but I think it's interesting in some regards. So I would look into CMC roles. They are always short staffed. That's what I'll say. Always short staffed, always looking for people. So I think that's a great place to like wiggle in and then you can like maneuver to regulatory strategy or writing. We also have medical writers who help us with a lot of our documentation. A lot of regulatory professionals are good writers, so sometimes at smaller organizations, they will just do the writing for stuff like a meeting request or a briefing book. But medical writers help with like the investigator for sure. They help with some of the manufacturing documentation, but there's medical writers that are specialized in writing CMC documentation. Quality assurance, that's just as important. Quality assurance, I always tell people, it's a great way to start. Nobody wants to work in quality because they say it's boring. No one wants to write SOPs and work instructions, but hey, it's how you get in the door. Quality assurance, CMC, and I would say project management right now are gonna be the easiest ways to get into biotech and pharma, and then you get enough experience and exposure and network and you can like go somewhere else. Information technology, of course, most companies have that. Then we have commercial operations. This is generally only gonna be at larger companies. A small startup, unless they have an approved product already, isn't gonna have like strong commercial operations. Um, normally like the Amgens, the AstraZenecas, the Takedas, you know, those type of organizations are gonna have commercial operations because they have many approved products. So a lot of opportunities in like corporate communication. Another thing I wanna highlight, sometimes companies hire people to help with the corporate communication or writing certain scientific articles if they don't have enough resources themselves. So people focus on the big companies when they wanna work in biotech and pharma, but sometimes you gotta go work for the vendor go work for the vendor, go work for the contract research organization that's helping a lot of these companies execute their trials like Cineos and IQVIA. There's a lot, those are just the top two that came to my head. Worldwide clinical trials, all these CROs, most of them short staffed need people. And CROs for the most part will train you. You get six to 10 to 12 months in a CRO, and I say six to 10 to 12 because you'll know what I mean when you start working at one. I made a video about CROs, to me, you get a lot of work, a lot of clients, not a lot of time off. I don't know if it's changed since I worked at a CRO for a short period of time, but that's just something I wanna know. So corporate communications, there's probably PR agencies that specialize in working for biotech and pharma companies. You can go work there. Business development operations, a lot of merger acquisitions take place within biotech and pharma companies, especially the big ones, but even the small ones, sometimes they wanna look for people to buy them. So you could work in the business development part of their smaller organization. And if you have an MBA or you just graduated undergrad with business, I would probably go to like a consulting firm first, like a Deloitte or BCG Bain, because they have specific sectors within their organizations that specialize in biotech and pharma organizations. You work there, you get the experience, and then you transition over to the client side. Product support, not really sure what that is. Sales, of course, like 
you know, there's sales jobs. <laughs> and then marketing, um, there's marketing agencies you can also work for. If you are a marketing major and you're interested in biotech and pharma, find a marketing agency that works with companies that have a therapeutic interest. And that's something I wanna say for this video, like overall, any of these companies that you're targeting, if you have zero experience, you're more likely to get the opportunity if you're able to showcase that you have some sort of personal connection to the disease that the company is treating some sort of personal interest. Like you have to get that across on your resume in some way, whether you've worked or volunteered for different like advocacy groups because you have a parent that has dementia or you have a friend that has some sort of disease or illness. I spoke a lot in my interviews about sickle cell trait and sickle cell disease. I have sickle cell trait and it was really important for me to work for organizations that were working towards finding a treatment for that. That's how I got my third regulatory job was they interviewed, I think like 15 people. They didn't hire me for until seven months later. And they said I was just the best fit. Uh, services, obviously law. Hey, hey, you guys know I'm going to law school. So one thing that I could do that would be easier for me probably than most is once I get my jur Juris Doctorate, I would be able to become in-house counsel for a pharmaceutical company. Small, big, doesn't really matter because I've worked in regulatory for so many years. I'm already familiar with the industry and now I just have the education to back it up. Plus the JD MTH combo, then there's recruitment, of course. You can become a recruiter. I haven't seen many recruiters transition from like that type of service over to the research and development side, but nothing's impossible. If you have a bachelor's in science, maybe you start there. And then there's venture capital and management consulting. So there's a lot of VCs that invest in pharma and biotech companies. You can go and apply for roles of VCs. I don't think people think about that, but if you have your science degree and you're interested in biotech and pharma, get an entry level job at a VC where you're just reviewing different biotech and pharma companies or you're finding different companies for your VC to invest in. That's the general overview of careers in the biotech industry. I've made videos before about how to get roles and I've kind of touched on it a little bit in this video, but I'm not gonna pretend like it's not hard. The job market also isn't the best. I would say number one, look for contract jobs. My first regulatory role ever was a contract. It was a three year contract. I didn't even stay for the three years because it doesn't matter. You just need to get the contract. Especially in a job market like this, a lot of companies are leaning towards contract hiring contractors. That's number one. Number two, utilize LinkedIn, it's your best friend. Turn on the open to work feature and tag all the jobs that you're interested in. Number three, explore LinkedIn and look at the different job titles. Like I said, just search quality assurance and then filter by industry because you can look up pharmaceutical manufacturing and also biotech in the LinkedIn features and start looking at different opportunities. Make sure your resume is tailored to the specific subsection that you are uh, focused on. And I don't know why I left these other two fingers up, but I just got pinged, so I have to go. I really love this coffee chat with you guys, or this tea chat, because you know I'm fasting. And we will talk soon. I miss you guys already. Till the next coffee chat. Bye.